Hi, Murray here. This is our Indy 23 greenhouse. And this is where the home of the Indy uh, set of plans arrives at. Now, I just want to show you what's happening here. This is a fantastic system. Two fish tanks, filter, mineralization tank, all the elements that you need in a large home system, and you can transpose that into a farm system. Now, I've got students that have built farms all around the world, and it's just magnificent the work they do particularly with this indie set of plans that we actually give you in the aquaponics design course. Now the plans we give you is for the Indy 11.5, which is a smaller version of this, but all the same elements are included. And it's just fantastic. Now we've got students from all around the world who've successfully built this because as part of our aquaponics design course, we not only give you those beautiful plans, but we also give you as an add on bonus extra, a course in how to build fiberglass tubs and fish tanks. Fantastic. And we've got students, one in South Africa I'm thinking of at the moment actually, who's built an absolutely magnificent system. It's a copybook system, beautiful work, where he's made his own fiberglass tanks, etc., based on our, our course we gave him, and also based on the Indy 11.5 plan set. And he's turned out this beautiful work. Now he's not the only one, but I just can think of that one at the moment. So you can do this too. You can be empowered by this course to move towards sustainability, and um, some kind of food independence for yourself because honestly, these days, you should be thinking about that more and more. Look what's happening in England at the moment. Large streets and streets of cars backed up to buy fuel. Why? There's no truck drivers. What do you think's going to be next? Just wait and watch the news. Shortages of food, but it won't bother me. Hey, look at the Swiss chard we've got. And I've told you before, you can cut this, chop it up, put it in a, put it in a pot, boil it up, add some beautiful coconut milk to it, fantastic, so healthy, so good to eat. All the stuff you can do when you've got an aquaponics uh, system at your place. But in this particular bed, in our Indy um, systems, we're growing 128 lettuce grows in this bed. Actually, we supply a restaurant every week with about 200 lettuce, and this is one of the beds we produce them in. Have a look at them, all different stages of growth, different varieties of lettuce, because the restaurant owner actually wants, he doesn't want all the same lettuce, he wants different coloured lettuce, so he can make up beautiful salads to go with his meals. Have a look at that, these beautiful lettuce. Look, so healthy. Red ones, green ones, ones that are curly. I love this particular lettuce. It's called um, Lalique, that's the name of it. It's actually part of the iceberg family, but you can grow it in hot climates. It's absolutely fantastic. It's crunchy, it looks nice on the plate, and it grows to a good size. It's a really good lettuce. And the restaurant owner just absolutely loves them. He wants more and more of those. He loves these two, these little ones, because they've got a different leaf shape, so they look good on the plate. And also, obviously, he mixes with it a bit of red, so you produce a really beautiful salad. Okay, let's move along. See what we've got growing here? When we cook our fish, we love to have a bit of sage. A bit of sage goes with fish. And look at that. Just on the corner of a, of a wicking bed, we've got sage growing. Look at it, it's in beautiful flower. Not only do you produce really great food, but, you know, it's fun. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? A beautiful thing to have in your greenhouse. Sage. Yep, goes well. Here we can see in our wicking bed, we're at the end of a crop of celery. We've chopped them off, harvested them, used them, and we're letting them shoot again so we can get some more celery. You notice here's some carrots. We're growing some carrots, and that area's just been prepared. We're going to plant that up with carrots in the next few days. And over here, we've got radish. Radish coming along. Some big, big ones in here that we harvest as we want them. My wife just loves radish. But there you go. They're all in there, coming along beautifully. So we've got radish. Now on this side here, We've got the good old favourite of kale. Kale is a superfood, we're told. So we've got plenty of it. We just break off what we want every couple of days. We come and get some, give it a bit of a wash, and that goes into our salad. Hiding under here is some um, parsley, beautiful parsley. Look at that, absolutely beautiful. More silver beet. We call it silver beet here in Australia. Most people tend to know it as Swiss chard. More kale. More different kind of silver beet growing here. Look, different kinds of stuff. As you can get the picture by now, my wife and I really love to eat silver beet. We just love it. More beautiful parsley. Look at that, more than we can possibly use. We give the restaurant guy a bit of that every week. He gets a half a dozen sprigs of that, which he uses for decorative purposes on the meals he produces. Look at that, perfect. If you go to one of our local supermarkets here, you'll get a bit about the same size as that. It'll cost you $3.50. I looked just the other day. Look at that, I can afford to throw it away if I want to. There's plenty of it. Um, here we go, this is a different kind of parsley. This is an Italian parsley. Once again, it's got a much bigger leaf, but we've got miles of it. So there you go, Italian parsley. 
Moving down here, here's a bed that we're about to replant. This is an experimental bed, it's a sand bed. And we've all already grown a number of green crops in it just to see how they go. And we'll replant this with lettuce because quite frankly, the restaurant owner is wanting more and more lettuce from us every week. So we're having a bit of trouble keeping up with that, but this will be planted out with lettuce. The way that works is the bed floods every hour and a half for just long enough for it to flood it and then it slowly drains back to the sump. But that's another whole story that we can tell you in the aquaponics design course one day soon. And remember, when we do new things, we actually backload them for our past students. How about that, eh? So any new information that comes up, we cert we, we're actually happy to share that with our students. So there you go, that's our, our aquaponics greenhouse, or one of them anyway, that we house our Indy 23 and Indy 11.5 systems in. And remember, we give you a complete set of plans for that. And I'm there all the time answering questions. <laughs>